centuries after the invasion, wizards at the Riptide Project decided to bring slivers back to life from fossils. And that went about as well as you'd expect. Their fatal flaw? The slivers need a queen to rule their hive mind, lest they run rampant and destroy everything and everyone in their wake. Think you have the mental fortitude to command and control the sliver horde? Well, now is your chance because they're back in modern. And this is Five Color Modern Slivers. When Wizards of the Coast decided to put slivers back into M14, sliver players around the world rejoiced that we would receive a few new toys for modern slivers. But much like the Wizards of the Riptide Coast, Watsi didn't expect slivers to run out of control with dragons of Tarkir? Ah, but Collected Company finally gave modern slivers what they needed to recover in number after a board wipe, and slither or sliver their way to victory. Andrew Bowman is one of the premier sliver pilots, day twoing in GP Pittsburgh in 2015, along with many other good finishes with his deck. The deck I am discussing in this video is based off of a 75 card list he recently piloted. Let's take a look. Let's start with ability granting slivers. Remember, all slivers share their abilities with one another. So the deck runs a playset of Gale Rider sliver for flying. Don't let flying underwhelm you. It actually ends up making your sliver squad basically unblockable, which happens to be a huge problem for most modern opponents. Gale Rider is actually one of the most important slivers for your path to victory. We also run two Blur Sliver. Giving every creature in your deck haste is nothing to scoff at. This card lends itself to some of your more busted draws. And in tandem with Mana Weft and Sentinel Sliver, things get nasty real fast. One Dark Heart Sliver, definitely one of your most defensive cards in the main. This guy, or gal, or Sliver, more or less single-handedly, or rather single-clawedly, tentacle scythedly. Okay, I'll stop. But either way, Dark Heart Sliver makes it very difficult for Burn and Valakut decks to win. Three Diffusion Sliver, which is great against opposing spot removal, and makes life very difficult for almost any deck, especially Jund and Abzan, as their primary way to win is by picking off your important slivers. One Harmonic Sliver, an effective one that is terrible in multiples. It's worth noting that you do not have the option to blow up a target, so if your Aether Vial is the only one in play, you probably don't want to play this dutter. Four mana weft sliver turns every sliver into a bird of paradise, so what's not to like? With the blur sliver on the field, your opponents will cry as you just dump your legion onto the battlefield. With sentinel sliver and blur sliver on the field, this allows you to play your slivers, attack for a lot, and then tap them for mana post-combat to play more slivers. Two necrotic sliver, this cute little guy here allows you to cash in your bad slivers to blow up your opponent's valued things. Typically, you won't mind sacrificing slivers that may be giving redundant abilities. In other words, if you end up with more than one Blur or Gale Rider sliver and so on, they make for great necrotic sliver fodder. Usually, you will win through a few activations of this ability. Lands, planeswalkers, creatures, enchantments, and artifacts. Necrotic sliver gets them all. What about basic sliver lords to pump up your horde's power and toughness? Well, the deck runs four predatory sliver. The more more lords the better. Just a few of these can pump your team up to be 4 fours or more, making blocking very bad for your opponent. A playset of Sedge Slivers, a sliver lord that gives the ability to regenerate? Yes, please. After playing one of these, you are usually inclined to leave mana up for regeneration shields. Also worth noting that with Aether Vial or Collected Company, you can use Sedge Sliver to ambush your opponent by regenerating your team in response to a Sorcery Speed Wrath. One Sentinel Sliver, while not always the best ability, Vigilance can come in handy, and so it's good to have one copy of this just in case. And of course, Four Sinew Sliver, because any tribal deck is happy with more lords. The next one is a little debatable, but I like one Siphon Sliver. Sometimes relevant, sometimes not. Siphon Sliver serves a unique role in the deck, and sometimes makes winning impossible for your opponent, or just buys you a few turns. With just two lords in play, you could be looking at a 10-point life swing. And though it is not a Sliver, the deck also runs one Spellskite. This should be obvious, it's great at protecting the important Slivers and annoying your opponent. 
months. This Phyrexian horror has earned itself an honorary title of Sliver. What spells are we running? Well, obviously a play set of four Aether Vial for a tribal deck like this. Aether Vial allows you to develop your board while leaving open mana or using it to even further your board presence. An unchecked Aether Vial will quickly bury your opponent in creatures and just the type of play Slivers ideally wants turn one. And yes, for Collected Company, a new addition to the deck that really pushes it over the top letting you spawn more creatures onto the board at instant speed to rebuild after a board wipe or ambush an opponent. What does this deck's mana base look like? Your most important color in the deck is probably going to be black most games due to the presence of Sedge Sliver, but closely followed up by green for your more busted mana weft Sliver hands. As such, we run four Cavern of Souls, a land that lets you tap for any color for your Slivers while making them uncounterable. Cavern is easily one of your most important lands. One Forest, one Godless Shrine for black and white, a full play set of Mutavolt, which gives your deck a sliver that avoids wraths altogether, and gives your deck reach for when you enter the late game and draw blanks. A pair of Overgrown Tomb as well as four Sliver Hives. Hive serves as an odd combination of Mutavolt and Cavern, as it provides you with all five colors for your slivers, but also has some reach when you have five mana and nothing to do. And three Verdant Catacombs and a Watery Grave finish out the mana base. Not too bad as far as modern mana bases go, and certainly better than you might have been expecting for a five color deck. So what's in our sideboard? One Cautery Sliver, a flexible sliver that can be used to either burn your opponent out or save yourself from a similar fate, although you usually will end up just burning out your opponent. A pair of Frenetic Slivers, while at first glance this card seems, well, kinda bad and odd, it actually is quite good at blanking opposing removal. The downside is, if you lose the flip, you lose your sliver. But that's something that was going to happen anyway. We'll also add a couple more harmonic slivers, which is great against blood moons and are otherwise impossible to beat. Also good against bogles and affinity. One homing sliver, a great card post board when you need to find certain sliver bullets for your opponent's strategy. One leeching sliver, good at forcing damage through blocks, but doesn't really serve a niche role past that. One sliver hive lord, mid range fair strategies have a very difficult time with this, along with the rest of your slivers once this hits the board. Two additional spell skites, just in case. It's good against any deck that plans to pick you apart one sliver at a time. Being a colorless option is also relevant as you won't need to fetch your lands with this in mind. One siphon sliver for extra life gain. It's great against burn, affinity, valakut, and will just buy you a lot of time against any mid-range strategy, such as Jeskai Control or Jund. One telekinetic sliver, which will lock your opponent off of playing spells and or blocking altogether. Usually you can use its ability to lock down all blockers, setting up a very lethal attack on your next turn. And finally, three Warping Whale. The fact that this card uses colorless mana happens to work out very well for this deck. All of its utility lands produce colorless mana, making it easy to cast. Being able to counter Sorcery Speed Wraths will usually end the game in your favor. This is possibly your highest impact card out of the board. While far from cheap, Modern Slivers is also far from the most expensive deck in the format, and it is perfect for players wanting extreme synergy and aggro swarm, and the whole while offering a taste of the unexpected with this often under the radar deck. I hope very much this tech has been of some help to you. What modern deck would you like to see a tech of next? Let me know in the comments below. And you can help me out over at patreon.com by becoming a patron alum of Tolarian Community College. Support from you is the only reason this channel is still here today, still going and growing strong. So thank you.